Hey guys, this is James from TDB bringing you in between episode number 118. Um, and uh, today we are doing something a little bit different from prior in between episodes and episodes. Um, and uh, the tea we're covering today uh, is a tea that I own two of. Uh, and it's, uh, it's a cheaper tea. Uh, it is the Year of the Goat uh, Yunnan Sourcing Ripe Tea Cake. Uh, this tea currently uh, in 2017, the beginning, uh, sells for $22 on the Chinese Yunnan sourcing site and $25 uh, on the uh, .us site. Um, and so I've had this tea recommended to me by a couple people, so thank you uh, Paxel, uh, who I haven't heard from in a while, and thank you uh, the teaching James, so thank you to a different James than myself. Um, and I actually didn't order this tea originally and uh, it arrived with me sort of through a happy coincidence. Um, I had ordered a couple of other cakes from Yunnan Sourcing and uh, these teas got mistakenly sent. Uh, so uh, Scott offered to me, offered these teas to me at a discount and because I'd heard good things previously, uh, I decided to take them up on it. And it's, uh, it's quite a bit better than I expected and uh, I, uh, if you want to take uh, principally uh, Shang Poor drinkers' uh, opinion, uh, then uh, I think it's uh, worthwhile for anyone that likes drinking uh, ripe poor. Uh, so the year of the goat, 2015 tea, uh, that's how I got it. Uh, so this is to satisfy requests for variety as well as cheaper teas. Um, so this definitely, I'm using five grams here. So uh, the amount of money that it cost me, even if I didn't get in on a discount is, uh, is under is around 40 cents or something so something really really quite reasonable um, for the uh, quality of tea <clears throat> yeah um, so I have already drank one steep I am on steep number two and three so you can see it's getting this real dark color already and I think this is a good example of a ripe pour you know that's just good to buy and good to drink it's a tea for drinkers it's not necessarily a tea for collectors or a tea that you're gonna buy in order because it's going to improve uh, vastly uh, in the next 10 years. You buy it and you drink it. Um, so here you go guys. Cheers. Mm. So the initial infusion had a little bit of the fermentation left over. Not much. This one there's not much at all. It's a really um, full creamy taste to it. Um, yeah, it, I mean, it tastes like ripe pour in a lot of ways. It has a strong, robust mouthfeel. Um, it's sweet. Uh, it's sort of milky, uh, creamy uh, in the mouth. Uh, very easy to drink. Here's tube number three. And I have just heated up this water again as well. So getting a really nice dark color. Um, and uh, one thing I would also wholeheartedly recommend is that people check out Scott's video. He did a video, uh, it's kind of long, but it's, I think, very worth watching for anyone that likes ripe pour, where he drank this tea, uh, the uh, Green Miracle, and the Yang Luohan, and he sort of talks through a lot of different concepts about ripe pour. Um, some of the stuff covered is, uh, sort of like the uh, blend of leaves. So this is made out of Menghai County material. Um, so different than the factory, uh, but sort of the same area. Um, and it's a blend of uh, Cha To, the Lao Cha To. Uh, a lot of you are familiar that drink the tea as well as uh, Tuji grade, uh, if I'm remembering qu correctly, uh, ripe leaves. So smallish leaves in combination with the Cha To. And I think it's blended really well. It's not a overly complex tea, but it is uh, complex and interesting enough to keep you sort of engaged in the session. It's got a really rich aroma, um, and uh, yeah, and so so uh, one of the things that Scott talks about the film in the, uh, in the video is just sort of like how ready to drink some of these ripe pours are, how, how on the scale of zero to a hundred, how fermented they are and stuff like the Green Miracle is more on the lighter fermented side of things, whereas this is a little bit further along, um, whereas something like uh, Aged Ripe Poor would definitely be closer to that 100% mark. Anyways, uh, cheers guys.
so thick, creamy. We're getting increased uh, color. Uh, it's getting darker and darker in each subsequent brew. Um, super easy to drink, very smooth, very soft um, the whole time. We're gonna do one more here. Um, and yeah, I, uh, I enjoy this tea. I think maybe this is a tea that I'll have to drink with Denny at some point to see what a more uh, frequent ripe pour thinks of it. In my experience, this goes for about eight to 10 steeps, uh, which I think is plenty for a tea of this kind. I don't, I don't know if I would even wanna drink this tea for 15 steeps really. Um, it's uh, this steep right here that I'm holding up, steep number four, I think is the darkest. Steep number five looks like it's lightened up a little bit, so probably gonna have to uh, continue to extend those steep times. Um, we're getting into some of the different ripe pour flavors, um, a little bit more fruits. I'd say it's still uh, fruits and wood. I'd say it still has uh, a lot of creaminess, a lot of woodiness going on, um, but it's it's changed a little bit. This steep is a little bit thicker, a little bit less sweet than the previous steeps. I think that's just a product of um, sort of hitting this tea when the leaves have fully expanded and maybe just going for a little bit longer. Still very good, um, uh, very solid steepings, I'd say. And there you have it. Um, so thank you guys for tuning in. Let me know how you guys like this episode on uh, Ripe Poor. I'm not sure if that I've done an episode on Ripe Poor uh, in the past hundred or so. I know I, the initial in between episodes were ripe, but it's not a category of tea I drink from often. And usually when I do, it's daily drinker type stuff, uh, such as this one. So let me know if this sort of content is stuff that you guys are interested in. And thank you guys for tuning in. Cheers.